we thought we'd give you a quick tour of one of the light jets. This is a Cessna Citation Mustang, also called a 510. Uh, it's a beautiful plane. Some people call it a VLJ for a very light jet, but it's in between the really, really light jets like the Eclipse 500, 550, which we fly that one as well. Gorgeous plane. I consider those kind of personal jets. Uh, and then it kind of bridges this from this to the larger airplane. These planes gross weight is a, a little bit over 8,000 pounds. When you, pull it, when you load it fully with uh, fuel, you can still carry, depending upon how, people, how much people weigh in the luggage, roughly around three to four people, depending upon what they have. So let's give you a quick tour on this plane. This particular plane has a lot of hours, around 10,000 hours. It was used a lot for charter. It's a great plane, super fun to fly. It's just a sweetheart to fly. Of course, I like pretty much every airplane. Uh, has a lot of capabilities, looks a lot of ways similar to the other citations. You got a very nice size baggage compartment accessible from both sides. Look at that, like today, we went through here and today had put uh, two sets of golf clubs from the desert and brought some friends back. So a lot of nice room, you can put a lot of things. Uh, I've put walkers in there, folding wheelchairs, boxes of things, etc. So it's pretty cool, gives you lots of room. And even up here, you can put 320 pounds max. Of course, your total weights uh, with everything, with fuel and everything else is a consideration always. Uh, very nice, very pilot friendly. This is not locked, but we lock it later. This is just another safety lock in through here. As we walk around here, it's got glass windshields, glass windshields uh, with embedded heating elements for defogging and de-icing. Uh, it's really cool, it's really nice, very efficient windshield, very nice, instead of using bleed air like some aircraft use. Of course, it's like beautiful side view coming in through here. We have our pedo, a static, our pedo tube in through there. Through here, really nice, easy door. We're gonna go to the cabin later, but just give you an idea. Boom, very nice. In through here, nice little set of stairs. And we'll go through later and play around with that. Very nice door, very smart. These are proximity sensors to how it tells you whether the door is locked and so forth, and you have your lock here. Coming in through here, we got the ice boots. The DI speeds use pneumatic air from the engine, bleed air as we come off that, we call it service air, and those uh, inflate uh, when you activate them to be able to knock off ice, so it's a DI system. These devices in here, you have eight of them, those are our, our stall strips, so make sure that it gives us the proper stall characteristics on the plane. Through here, it's conventional controls, in terms of the ailerons and so forth, the same, I've got them locked on in the, in the cockpit, and as we come along through here, here are our speed brakes, which are electric on this plane. It's all pretty much other than the brakes, electric aircraft. And so in through these, I, we've deployed them so you get an idea what they look like. You've got your actuators in there and they open top and bottom. That helps uh, increase the drag. And of course, will help us slow us down when we need it. Don't use them very often. You use them primarily after landing. Uh, I try to control my speed unless I absolutely have to use them in flight. I don't use them very often. The flaps are deployed to give you a little bit of idea of that. So coming up through here, got another pretty large volume aft cargo. The aft cargo, you can see that this plane's been used a lot. It's a little dirty on the inside there, the base. Uh, and then over in the far, you'll see where we connect the battery. Right now we've got it connected. I left that open because I want to make sure I disconnect it when we're done showing everything. And through here, so you've got this nice little handy little light, not too fancy, but you notice the ski tube. That was specifically done by Good. We know anybody knows about Good skis, G-O-O-D-E. He was one of the first, if not the first, I think, owner of a Mustang. And he said, I wanted a ski tube, so they put it in there. So it's really, really handy to be able to have that. Very nice feature. Uh, our golf club skis, et cetera. Here's our engines, our our Pratt 6, 615 engines in here. This six is part of the 600 series. In fact, that Eclipse we showed you has a smaller version of this engine. So the 600 engine goes 610, 650 for the Eclipse, 615 for the Mustang, 617 for the Phenom 100. So it's a really nice air engine, works well. TBO would nominally 3,500 hours. Got a little lock, we always, I never use this because I don't want it engaged because it restricts the rudder in case somebody moves. These strakes are very similar to what you see on the Learjet. This helps a little bit more of longitudinal stability in through there. Seagree takes you around, you see the tail, typical Textron T-tail on all their latest jet series. And so you see that 
very nice. You got two trim tabs up through there. You got our little static wicks. That's what those little guys are. And through here, the dis dissipate static electricity. We put these on it so no one gets their eyes poked out. The ones that are low. Really nice air conditioning system with dual controls for temperature. So that's the exhaust for that. Of course, our right engine flaps, another speed brake. It's really cool. You can see that jack screw in there, how that operates. It's really neat. You can see how that goes back and forth along the jack screw. You never want to put any hands, fingers, or anything else in there just because of those things snap shut. It has a tremendous amount of force. Can we just come over to the right wing? Got this again, another static wing cover. Usually we put them all three of them on just to protect, just in case they break, you can replace them. It's not too big of a deal. And you notice pretty low wing. This is very low wing. You also have to be careful with high snow drifts <laughs> if you go places like that. This is our emergency exit in here. We actually have a video on how to access emergency exit in here. So Tigger and I have one based on that. And as you're coming around, you get a great view, of course, of the engine and the N1, which is your fan, right in there on the intake of that engine. You got nice oval windows, tinted oval windows in through here. And of course, if we did have emergency, right, use that as an exit, step here and down and get off the bird. And here, of course, we have one of our pedo, uh, pedo tubes with one of the personal wings covers, <laughs> high temperature covers and then our angle of attack. So this moves with the angle of uh, the aircraft as we're flying, the relative wind, and this gives us an idea of our angle of attack. Again, another glass windshield, another access to the nose. Come around here to the little nose. I pet it occasionally. And of course, then you have these, which are static dissipators. These take static electricity if you go, when you're moving through the air, especially from pre precipitation, and then they help dissipate it out to the atmosphere rather than into the plane itself. So that's exterior tour of the Citation Mustang. Gives you an idea of what a really, really capable light jet uh, that's available out in the market. We made around 465 of these guys. And we'll show you a little bit of the inside. So it's very comfortable for four people. There's T. Grayson in the back. He's six six and kind of hits the top of the head, <laughs> top of the ceiling in there. Uh, but it's pretty comfortable. It works out pretty well. It uh, has some nice tables in here, side tables. The windows actually provide a lot of view through their oval shape and through here. There's no baggage area behind the rear seat. There's some here on that, as you saw on the entry coming in on the lav. And the lav is a dry lav. In other words, think of the camping toilet. So not very many people use it, but it's good in emergencies but there's not a lot of room for storage in here. So we just tell everybody, hey, put your stuff in the nose or in the aft baggage, or you can put some things in the back here. So this gives you a nice idea. They're comfortable seats. Very, very quiet airplane. It's very nice to be able to fly. Got nice features, when we have power, you can see those lights going on. Got a little bit of storage in through here. Actually, quite a bit. Things that you need to be able to have. Toilet paper for the toilet. Here's the toilet. I've never used it. I've never had any of my passengers use it, but you could use it if you need to in an emergency. If you're going to use it, put cat litter in it. Then up front in the cockpit, the cockpit uses a G1000 avionics. Nice, clean cockpit. Easy, easy to get in and out. It's a little tight for us. I'm about 6'3", T grade 6'5", 6'6", somewhere around there. So it's a little tight, especially for the ceiling room. But um, once you're in there, it's pretty. It's, it's not bad. It works well for long trips. And it has the capacity with all the G1000. Like I said, it can't be upgraded to an XI. But really easy to start. Battery on, press the le left engine, for example, button, pull the throttle out of idle cutoff, and watch all your temperatures, RPMs, etc., for the start, and there you go. 
that gives you a quick tour of the Citation Mustang. Pretty cool, it's fun to fly. Flying them for about 15 years now. So it's one of my favorite planes to fly. For just sheer fun, the Eclipse. <laughs> it's just so cool, the Eclipses are so cool to fly. It's like a little sports car. They're fast. Actually, the Eclipse will be faster than the Mustang. It'll use a, about 30% mm, less fuel than the Mustang and go a little faster. But it's a much smaller airplane. We're talking about a personal jet. Right with a gross weight of roughly 6,000 pounds, um, but very cool airplane. Almost the same range as the Mustang. Mustang's a little bit longer, maybe 150 miles, 200 miles sometimes, uh, than the Eclipse, but very, very close.